Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Caleb, as you probably know because you've been watching this entire series. So this video, we're going to be picking up from where we stopped last video, which we were talking about candidate keys. So this video, we're going to be talking about primary keys, which is the next step. So what is a primary key? Well, in the last video, we, t uh, we defined some po uh, possibilities for candidate keys. Something we could use as the main key. It's a candidate because we have to pick it to be our primary key. So we have a list of possibilities. One of them was a username. Another was an email. And then if you don't have something simple like this, you could do something like your full name, which that would be like first name, last name, middle name, and then plus an address, which address would probably be broken up into like street, city, uh, you know, all, like all the parts of an address, and then possibly your birth date, or just daub. So here are just some possibilities for candidate keys. We could have a username, email, first name, middle name, blah, blah, blah. Well now, once you have all your possible candidate keys, you want to pick one to be your primary key. So how do you do that? Well, once again, you got to make sure we look at the, the rules or suggestions for keys. This is specifically talking about primary keys. We want our primary key to be unique, never changing, and never null. So username is never going to change, right? So that's pretty good. You always need a username when you sign up for an account, so it's never null. And it has to be unique because two people can't have the same username. So this would be a good primary key. Let's check out email. Well, it's you can make it unique. You can require people to uh, only have, like, you can prevent multiple emails. So when you create an account, you can only use an email that has not been used. That's an option. So that's possible. Never changing. And, well, it depends. Depends on if it if you use your email like a user account username, like you sign in with your email and you have a password too, well then the chances are you're not going to be able to change it. Although now uh, you can probably update your email and stuff. So it, it's possible to be never changing if you prevent people from updating their main email. So possible, possible, and never null. You can require someone to have an email. So that's possible. All three of these are possible. So this is a Eh, possible. I'll just put a dash. First name, last name, middle name, address, date of birth. Well, probably the whole group as a whole will be unique. The chances of finding someone with your same name living at the same place as you with the same date of birth is almost impossible. So, unique, practically yes, but possible you can possibly have a, a duplicate. So, possible. Never changing. Oh, well people can get married, so their last name can change. First name can even change, or middle name can even change. You can move. You can't be born a different date. I mean, you can't be born again, like, unless you become a Christian. <laughs> but anyways, never null. Well, some people might not have an address. Either that, or they might not have a middle name or something like that. So, this is probably not the best primary key. So, in this example, I'd probably go with the username. And then, you define that as your primary key, and then you can use that to make connections between tables. So you have a comment by a username, that's the connection. That is a natural key, and we'll be talking about surrogate keys in the next video if you know anything about that. But basically, you can use your username as an ID, rather, like as a primary key. So you could have, let's say this is my username. This can be the connection for all of my rows by me. So if I have a table for comments, a table for users, a table for, for sales, well, if I buy something, Caleb Curry, connection. If I post, a, if I'm a user, well, connection. If I uh, post a comment, connection. It all kind of points back to the user table because that's going to be the uh, parent of the uh, relationship here. So this could be a primary key. So that's a primary key. 
Now this will also be indexed because primary key is a source of is a uh, type of index. So you can do select statements really easily with that and everything like that. So that's going to be how you connect most of your data. Now, the other Canada keys that we did not choose, they're known as alternate keys. An alternate key, it works, I mean, you can, it, can be, uh, it could be the primary key, but basically it's all the candidate keys that were not selected as the primary key. You do not, you're not required to define all of your alternate keys in your database. In fact, you don't even need any alternate keys. But you may want to because oftentimes they will be something you're doing searches for or uh, connecting tables or whatever it is alternate keys might be useful. So you can create an index on the alternate key. So I could create an index on the emails, for example, because I said that was a, a possibility. Well now, that can, uh, that'll be an index and it will probably be used because you might want to do data by the emails, like selecting everyone by their email. You know what I mean? Maybe. Possibly. Basically, uh, you can you can do a select and then you can choose the columns you want to choose and then the table and then you can say where and then you could say like email has the value legit at awesome.com because you have an index on that it's going to work better so if you have a really good alternate key I recommend you index it simply for a good design and it'll help your database run faster. But if you don't really want an index on it, then don't do it because that's just another thing your database is going to have to maintain. It's going to have to update the index as well as the book. Sort of how if I have a book here and I change the insides of the book, well then the index in the back is going to have to change too. So alternate keys, you can set them as uh, an index if they are good and useful if you will be searching for that kind of information. So that is introduction to primary keys and alternate keys. Don't really have much else to say. The next video we'll probably be talking about when you see people do things like user ID, which is a really common way for people to define primary keys. You'll connect things by IDs. We'll be talking about that in the next video and when we should do that and when we shouldn't do that. All right. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that was helpful and be sure to subscribe.